on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Monday, February 21st. It's game week, y'all. That's right. Game actually counts. Coming up on Sunday, Galaxy facing off against New York City FC, defending MLS Cup champs at Dignity Health Sports Park. 2 p.m., six days until kickoff, a game that actually counts, that actually matters, and from here on out, they all count, they all matter. Uh, Finally, some consequences with games. we got a whole bunch to talk about. Going to get you through the LA Galaxy's 2-2 draw with DC United, what we learned, which was a lot, what's coming up this week for the LA Galaxy, and and some other little rumors that are going in there, obviously talking about Eric Zavaleta um, and some other things that, that pop up as we go to help me do all that. He's back here Uh, once again. He was, uh, I I would just like to point out, I was the first person to sit next to Steve Goff uh, this this weekend, so he doesn't get any points or anything like that. Uh, But here he is. It's the uh, the panda himself, Mr. Kevin Baxter. Kev, how's it going? Well, no, I'm going to go all the way back. I'm going to, I'm going to pull rank on you. I'm going to go back to the 2010 World Cup. And I was uh, sitting next to Steve Goff in the, in the media room at some stadium uh, in Johannesburg, I think. And uh, I was talking to my wife on Zoom, the uh, talented and lovely uh, Mrs. Panda. I guess it was FaceTime at that time, whatever it was. And then she looked in the in the monitor and she said, is that Steve Goff next to you? Apparently, they worked together at the Washington Post a long time ago. Right. Um, so um, that's my first Steve Goff story. And m- my wife says he's a good guy. So I- I've been hanging out with him. And you were right. You were you were next to him on Saturday's game at the uh, Dignity Health Sports Park with DC United. He was there covering them. I sat next to him yesterday for the U.S. women's game where we saw um, the unfortunate incident with uh, Michaela Moore, the, the uh, own goal hat trick. And that's why I'm wearing the South Africa jersey today because – uh, Michaela Moore obviously plays for New Zealand. I, I just feel so bad for her. I don't that you, have, that, have that any... you're wearing a South Africa jersey. Well, I was going to get to that. See, this is the closest I have to Australia or New Zealand, which is just one country, right? This is the closest team I have to uh, <laughs> to either one of those countries. So I put this one on because that was as close as I could get. I, mean, I just feel, I know you and I were talking this uh, about this before, and you said, "Why did they you know, coach take her off at, at, in the 40th minute? Why not wait till halftime?" She she was broken after that third goal. Uh, she was broken when she got to the sideline, and and thank God they had the the FIFA dugouts where they actually have the little you know cover where she was able to go in the corner and and she just just bawled. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah. By, by the way, by the way, she doesn't cry if you don't take her off in the 40th minute. She can cry at halftime in the locker room instead of sitting on the bench where the camera continually zoomed in on her. You don't pull a player who just gave up three own goals to put attention on her and pull her in the first half. You just say. That's life. Get to halftime and we'll pull you off if you want to. Or, as everybody was saying, including I think uh, uh, Julie Foudy was saying as well, you want to stay out there and you want to tough through it because nobody should have to deal with three own goals, almost none of which were her fault. And that was that was bad luck. So you go ahead and do yours and deal with the broken player that you now have. Or you can let the player stay out there and try to fix it themselves. And they'll feel like there's an accomplishment having not done anything else for the rest of the game. You know, her coach said she came out for the second half, but we did not see her on the bench on the sidelines anywhere. So I, I don't know if she did or not. Uh, I do know that Vladko Andonovsky, the U.S. coach, who was a center back in his career, said that he thought that uh, Michaela Moore was, was in the right position on all three plays. 
And uh, on one of them, it was a header, and, and he, she thought the American player in front of her, Margaret Perch, was going to uh, actually head the ball, and she fanned on it, and it, it wound up hitting more right in the face and then bounced into the goal. So, I mean, it, you know, she was there in the right position. She tried to make a play. Give her credit. She didn't shy away after the first or second own goal. She kept going. By the way, the, uh, um, apparently only one other player in history has had an own goal in a game like this. Apparently there was one game – uh, where a team was, or a team, or a national federation, whatever, there was a, a, a dispute, and the, the so the the team that was part of the dispute just, just started shooting balls into their own net, and and so that doesn't count. But in a real game, only one other player in history, a, a guy named Stan Vanderbuse, for uh, playing in in, uh, in against Anderlich in the Belgium Jupiter League in mm. in the 90s, he had three own goals in the game. But the, on the third one, there was no replay, there was no VAR or anything. On the third one, a television station actually broke down the video afterwards, and it wasn't an own goal. The so goal, only goal was two. scored by an attacker. But th that was never changed. So in the record books, there are two people with own goals. You know, Michaela Moore did it in, in one half, did it in 36 minutes. And the other kind of interesting thing before we beat this dead horse uh, further, the U.S. played – the last time the U.S. played New Zealand was in the Olympics, and they won that game 6-1. to one. New Zealand had two own goals in that game. Michaela Moore did not score either, but they had two own goals in that game. So in, in the last two games the U.S. and New Zealand have played, the U.S. has outscored New Zealand 11-1, to 1, but five of those goals were scored by New Zealand defenders. Um, Michaela Moore now leads the She Believes Cup tournament in scoring with three. three. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she is a good player. She played in the 2015 World Cup. She made the 2019 Olympic team. She plays for Liverpool in England. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's 25 years old, very She's accomplished. Fine. There's nothing wrong with it. None of that was, I mean, I'll be honest with you, as a defender and, grow, and grow, growing up a defender, that stuff happens. What are you going to do? Like, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And yeah, it's a horrible time. And yeah, it's a whole day. Listen, New Zealand wasn't supposed, wasn't going to win that game anyway. I, I mean, and I say that respectfully. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, and I think she sh she'll be fine. I really don't think there's long-term effects on this. If there is, then, you know, then people around her aren't supporting her the way that that, that probably needs to be. So l let me, let me give you a hypothetical. So let's say you were her and you scored an own goal in a, in a game like that, but you get to go home to a country where, uh, Jacinda Ardan is your prime minister. Would you take that? I think uh, I would. <laughs> So, so, She's so, the so greatest you're right. world leader in the, yeah. in, in, on the globe. By the way, you say score own goals. What you mean is three own goals every time because she scored three um, because a that's the trick. record. That's the hat trick of, of own goals. And I believe it was a perfect hat trick as well. I believe there was like yes. a right foot, a left foot, and a head. Yes, it was a perfect hat trick. And the funny thing was the the first two were in the first eight minutes. And I, I thought it was just kind of a joke. I, I, I don't think they really meant it. Some of the U.S. fans started to chant own goal hat trick. Yeah, and sure yeah. enough, there it there it goes. See, that's what it is. Uh, by the way, uh, Galaxy fans, with the way the Galaxy defense played against DC United, you might also uh, be witnessing own goals aplenty uh, whenever New York City comes into town. So, um, so, just six days, I should point out, six days. We are in the absolute last stretch of things. This is it. Six days, less than a week. It's Sunday. LA Galaxy versus New York City FC. That's a two p.m. kickoff time. Right now, I'm actually it's actually reading Kevin. Two p.m. is the kickoff time. So 2 p.m. is the actual kickoff time. That's what it says right now. That'll, that'll change. That'll change. Most They have been pretty good with it on the MLS site. I was able to get every single kickoff time last year correct based on the MLS site. And if you go on the desktop site on MLSsoccer.com, you can click on the game. And if you click on the game, it'll go under. And underneath it, it'll say kickoff. And it'll tell you what time it is. And this one says 2 p.m. But you know it's even more exciting than the fact that the season's opening. It might kick off on time. It's at Dignity Health Sports Park. They're playing New York. Put aside all that. Right. They're going to have pupusas. This, this, the this is the, this is the biggest. This is the big news. Pupusas uh, with a purpose. Yes, you can get pupusas, and you can also feel good about your money going to to a good cause. As your waistline gets thicker, um, you, you mine can, can't get much thicker. It's it, we're we're already busting at the seams here. But as your waistline gets thicker, you're you're supporting a good cause uh, with with some good people. So um, AFJA is out there and they are doing and we've we've had them on the show before. Um, they run just amazing uh, little uh, little fundraisers, um, a whole bunch of really cool stuff uh, for kids uh, and soccer um, down in El Salvador. And so you are getting pupusas. I hope everybody is going to be in line for that. Um, I hope that uh, that. Kevin and I can phone in our orders uh, ahead of time, so that way um, we want to pull rank and, and try yeah, to get some of those. Yeah, we are pulling rank a little bit. It's yeah. going to be inside the state. It's just, we're not talking food trucks. It's no, inside, inside the stadium. The stadium. This is going to be and, great. And we've already told them that we think the lines are going to be huge, mainly because we're talking about it on the pod. And so uh, we may be able to call in our orders. So yeah. because we're we're important, you know, we're, we can't stand in line. We are very very important. Um, no, yeah, no, we at, actually at least do, in our we, own we, head. 
we actually do have a lot of things to do before the game. That 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 part is actually true. We do have a lot that we need to do before the game. Yeah, Jose says Josh is going to look like a thick king. He's not. He's not wrong. Uh, if I have my way with pupusas, I'm thinking, do I get three or six? That's really where I'm at. It's not. It's not like oh, three is good. It's more like six is better. That's usually where I'm at. So uh, I'm a big fan. I don't know which you sent me over some flavors or or, or the different uh, flavors. 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 Well, they are flavors. I mean, they're different. The different ingredients in some of these. Um, and so I will go about picking mine and, and we'll figure out what it is. But yeah, it was. I'm I'm pumped. I am very very excited. I'm, don't tell my wife I'm leaving way earlier than I'm supposed to, just so I can make sure that I get pupusas before uh, before kickoff. So they're also going to have horchata and some other treats too. Some Guatemalan pastries and Salvadoran pastries and mm. all kinds of good stuff. Mwah. Chef's kiss. That's what I have to say. Um, so it's going to be a big week for the Galaxy, um, just in terms of what is ahead. Uh, the LA Galaxy were off today on Monday. Uh, they will train on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with a game on Sunday. The big news here is that on Wednesday, the LA Galaxy will be holding their first in-person media availability um, at the field, you're absolutely you're allowed to go. You're allowed to be there. They did this a little bit last year for a couple things, but I don't know if they actually had players and coaches talk to people that were out there. So this is a little bit of a hey, we're kind of getting a little bit back to normal. But um, that's the good thing. The bad thing is I don't know that I'll be able to make it, so I don't know that I'll have the full coverage. But I know Damian will be there, and I know Scott will be there. Um, so we'll be able to at least talk to them and find well, out what's the, going on. The fact you're not going is maybe a good thing for the galaxy, but. The last official, I mean, I know you talked about that one that may or may not have happened last year. It did know? happen. I mean, there's video of it. Nikki K was there. Scott, I think Damien went. I mean, I, you know, I have these, I have memories. I know, I know it did happen. Um, I just because, don't know if they were allowed to like really talk to players a whole bunch. Because the last, I think, official like old school media availability was the one after the first home game in 2020. That was one where Chicharito did not all that. Remember, there were like 75 reporters there, a lot from Mexico for his first home game in MLS and he decided not to to show up, and by then all the players were gone. And remember, after that game, we got no quotes. We didn't talk to anybody. Yep. Yeah, it was a, it was a quick one. Uh, it was funny because we saw Sasha. Uh, when did we see Sasha? I saw Sasha question or, or something like that. We we were talking to Sasha. It was like, oh yeah, this is the first time we met. And well, he goes, well, I had the one game, but you guys didn't request me that game. It was like, oh, see, we we screwed up. We should have requested Sasha that that very first game. Then in 2020, that we actually had. So anyway, things returning to normal a little bit. Um, whenever we look at this. So again, just six days before the LA Galaxy face off against New York City FC. The big deal is that on Wednesday, uh, New York City FC will actually be playing in a CCL game as well. Um, and that, strangely enough, will be played at Bank of California Stadium. Um, and they were worried about travel and a whole bunch of things. So they will be playing in LA on Wednesday and staying for the game um, on Sunday when they play against the LA Galaxy. So if you want to watch them in the CCL and sort of figure out where uh, where you were, where they're at and where they're playing, and maybe there's a lot of focus they have on the CCL, Kevin. Maybe they won't be paying attention that much to the start of the season. The LA Galaxy will have to figure that out whenever they uh, kick off against them. So a lot of uh, a lot of interesting little things. Let's get to the LA Galaxy's game against DC United. Um, Let's. Yeah, it was uh, it wasn't a great game for the LA Galaxy. In fact, I watched them play uh, three of their seven games. Uh, and it's seven games now total for the preseason. The preseason now over. Uh, but three of those seven games I've watched them Four, play. Four, one, and two. Four, yeah. one, and two. And uh, this was by far their worst game that they played. Uh, Greg Vanny called it disjointed after the game. Uh, he said that the wide players were too wide, which meant the middle play, which meant the midfield players couldn't control the midfield. I would say that's pretty accurate because DC United seemed to run uh, through the middle of the field pretty much at will. Uh, Mark Delgado didn't have the effect he's had in previous games. Um, so a bunch of little things happen. And that being said, DC scored off of two set pieces. So in the 14th minute and the 58th minute, uh, both service from uh, Julian Gressel, who's not not too bad in case you've watched um, watched him play before. So um, that's sort of where you sit there. But Galaxy were able to come back in both of these cases and, and tie the game and, and in fact, look, not look too bad. Your starting lineup, uh, Jonathan Bond was back there. Uh, Leardam, I, I should point out, here were the three questions, okay? I had three questions going into this game. Here were the three questions that we wanted answers to in this game so that way we could figure out what was going to happen on Sunday. So the three major questions were, uh, will Julian Araujo start? He didn't. No. Yeah, I was going to say, you can answer these, Kevin. Uh, uh, will Derek Williams play? Absolutely not. No, he didn't. And will uh, Do Douglas Costa play? 
Only if you count the warmups. Only if you count the warmups. So those were the three questions, and we got no, no, and no to those, uh, which is interesting. You got the starting lineup again, Bond, Leardam again in place of Julian Araujo. Uh, you had Depew in the center with Koulibaly. You had Edwards out on the left-hand side. You had uh, Mark Delgado and Ravellison in the center. Then you had uh, Grand Seer and Cabral and Alvarez and Chicharito. Why, um, why do you call him Mark all the time? Is because he a, Is he a, an adult now? Did he drop he's, dumb oh, Marky? Yeah. He's, he's a grown man. You can't you can't call grown man Marky. Other people may be able to. I've just, I can't. He's 26 years old. He's a, he's a grown man. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. No, no, he's just he just Mark, and I see that's that's sort of the whole thing. It's like it, it gives it this weird sort of I don't know. It's not it's not appropriate. Let's put it that way. I'm going to call him Mark. Everybody else can call him whatever he wants. But anyway, Mark Mark Delgado in the center as well. So that's what you had from this lineup. It was pretty. I mean, it's expected from what we've seen throughout the entire uh, preseason. And I was talking through it with some of the reporters at the game. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure Julian Araujo didn't get any starts in the preseason. He may have gotten one before they went to, before he went to Mexico, but I don't think we saw that game. And I don't know that we knew that. Um, but otherwise Julian Araujo did not get any starts with the starting team, the entire preseason. That was one of the questions that we had for Greg Van at the end. And we'll, we'll sort of get to that. Um, and what he was saying with it, it's nothing, it's not as bad as perhaps we thought, which is, Oh, well, Greg's just forgetting about Julian cause he's expecting to be gone soon. Kevin, uh, it was more like he he was he wasn't fit. He missed two and a half weeks with Mexico, uh, and he was two and a half weeks behind everybody else. And so Greg was working on it. Rajo actually played ninety minutes in the game on Wednesday um, that they uh, that they played against well, that Vancouver. That would be a start then. So that that's the game he started. Yeah, so but he he, he, he didn't he didn't start with the starters. That was a second oh, team. Okay. That was a second team run. Um, so you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to say I don't I'm not sure I believe Vanny's excuse on that. I mean. He came back from Mexico after two and a half weeks. He wasn't in Cabo, you know, at the clubs. Yeah, he but he didn't play. Training. Yeah, but he didn't play. And that was that was the whole thing. And, and he, then he, he's not ready to play with the first team guys. He's been here longer than Vanny has. I mean, I think he knows, um, you know, and he played all last season with these guys. These are not new players. He, he got another 45 minutes, so he did get some time with the starters again. Um, coming into the second half. So Leardam has basically played 45 minutes right around that, maybe 60 minutes a couple times. Uh, so he's not really 90 minutes fit whenever you look at that. Araujo has played some 90 minutes in that game, and then he went 45 minutes on the on the half on Saturday. It's certainly, I mean, if I'm guessing right now, I'm guessing that Araujo is actually going to start on Saturday. I wasn't feeling that way until I heard Vanny sort of talk about him. But if you play a guy for 90 minutes and then 45 minutes, about three, four days apart, then you have to figure he's pretty much fit and ready to go now. Um, and he's probably more ready to go than, than Leardam is. So does, Ara I mean, this is one of those like betting things is, you know, does Araujo start on Sunday whenever you get to, well, to New York and City? And also you might want to take into consideration the fact that Araujo is way better than anybody else at that position. Leardam has been good. I'm not going to say, I, I agree with you. I a hundred percent agree with you. I'm not saying it, but it's not like Leardam has been bad. He's been an integral part of the LA galaxy winning a bunch of these preseason games. So I'm, I'm not low on, on Leardam. I think he's fine. I just, it's clear that Julian Araujo is above, head and shoulders above everybody else. I agree with that. Um, so we'll, we'll watch that and sort of see how it goes. Um, the Williams uh, availability and sort of Derek Williams, we heard that he trained with Galaxy 2 on Saturday, but he was not ready to get into a game. Um, so he was training with Galaxy 2. He'll probably train with the main team this week. Uh, but right now, Greg sort of called him questionable. And then we had Costa. So here was the fun thing. We had warm-ups. We were looking for Douglas Costa. He's out there, Kevin. He's running around. Uh, I look at Damien and I go, I don't know, man. I go, he doesn't look like he's like real athletic to me. I'm sort of I'm looking at this guy trying to like he's he's very low and stocky. He kind of looks like you, Panda, only way better in shape, but like <laughs> low and stocky. Like he could sneak up on you and you. Oh, gee, I didn't see you there. It was one of those. Um, well, and that makes him so hard to depossess because he's got a low center of gravity. He does have a low center of gravity. So I was showing it to Damien and Damien's like, Damien's like, just chill out. Just wait. Just wait. And then we saw him like take off on a sprint. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I was wrong. So I saw I saw sort of the movement there. Uh, but he was in shooting drills. He was in passing drills um, doing that whole thing. We were hopeful that maybe he might play, but he wasn't on any of the team sheets. So he wasn't going to play. Uh, we talked to Greg afterwards. Still a visa issue, basically, is what that comes down to. So uh, still working on the visa. It is a visitor's visa. They are transitioning that into the P1 visa. You can do that, apparently, without leaving the country. So all those things are great. The The one thing that's sort of holding them up is that it's like an eight-day process, and day five was Friday. You don't get to count today because it's a holiday, so that's not going to happen. So you have day six, seven, and eight. So you have three more days from Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to get his visa. If he gets his visa, you will see him play on Sunday. I don't know if he starts, although I wouldn't be against that. 
Uh, but he will get some time, certainly with the LA Galaxy on Sunday, if he's a, if he has his visa re- re- yeah. ready and available. Greg's uh, comment afterwards, I don't know if you're going to play it, but where he said that he will be available for selection and, and that he expects him to play. A couple of things talking to both Greg and and, and uh, uh, Costa last week, Greg said he's going to limit his time. The idea is he's not going to play every time. He said in t- in, in training and in, in games, he's going to limit Costa's time um, and, and going to try to get him through the season. Costa answered me and said, look, I'm you know, I'm not going to set goals, um, uh, numbers about how many goals I'm going to score, how many assists I'm going to have. My goal going into this season is to play every game. And then mm-hmm. I said, well, your manager just said you're not going to play every game. And he goes, okay, we're on the same page. Well, <laughs> <laughs> are you really when you just contradicted him? But uh, he seems like he's ready to do whatever he's asked to do. And one of the things, he's played 13 professional seasons um, in Europe. He won uh, league titles in 11 of those. He's won 22 cups overall. And I said, you know, the one thing, first of all, I said, what do you think you bring to the galaxy that they don't have? And he said, I don't know. I've only been here four or five days and I haven't practiced or played with the team much. And so I don't know what they need, but I will try to provide whatever they do need. But then he said, you know, the one thing I can bring is a winning mentality. He said, wherever I go, you know, I've had a mentality as winner. I've won in places. He said, I don't know too much about what happened last year, but people are starting to tell me about it. And he said, we're just going to put that behind us. Last, the past is past. We're done with that. And we're going to move on. And so I don't know what stories he's heard, but he sounded like it didn't. Uh, he he didn't get a good reading on what happened last year, and that he intends to improve it this year. Yeah, and there's zero chance the Galaxy are turning the page on last year. That is the main driving force behind their redemption season this year. Um, so it, it's it will be a focus. He will learn. He will learn. Everybody will tell him what had happened. They will be specific. They will talk about the embarrassment they faced of being in the playoffs the entire year and then missing out in the last like five minutes of a game. So, um, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be something to watch. So Costa was out there. Then all of a sudden we start getting little pictures and people tweeting out. They're like, hey, Eric Zavaleta is out there as well. So Eric Zavaleta was out on the field participating in drills as well, not on the team sheets. Uh, he is a free agent right now. He technically could have participated if he wanted to because he's a tri- he's basically a trialist. Um, with the LA Galaxy right now. So that could have happened. It didn't happen. Um, we'll talk more about Eric Zavaleta here in just a little bit. But the LA Galaxy have the starting lineup. They get out there. We talked about DC scoring first. Um, I will tell you that the LA Galaxy this entire preseason, at least certainly the three games that I have watched, I think have, and the other two games, they controlled possession really well, Kevin, but they didn't create chances out of controlling possession. A lot of what we saw last year, which is a lot of possession, a lot of getting dangerous, a lot of things that looked like they were promising, but no finishing sort of as a buildup product of the possession. But what this LA Galaxy team is right now is a 100% stone cold counter attacking team, and they are deadly good at it. The first goal is more of a buildup goal. I will admit that, but even that is more of individual efforts, certainly with Grant Sear. Uh, cutting across and cutting inside. That is his main move right now, and it has been working all preseason, which is cut inside, get across. He fed the ball out to Leardam, um, and then Leardam eventually got the ball into into, uh, Chicharito. It was too easy. It was the perfect sort of, let's switch the field, and if we switch the field quickly, Kevin, then by switching the field, we can create an overload, and that's exactly what they did with Leardam and Chicha, uh, which was create an overload on the far right-hand side, um, and whenever they did that, the center back was too late in covering for Chicha's run, sort of that inside the box to outside the post run um, and a little feed. It's too easy. It is so too easy um, in terms of you know what is, what is going on with how they created that goal. So I wouldn't expect that goal is there a lot. Um, in the regular season, but if it is Chicharito will bury, you know, 20 or 30 of those, no problems. Um, because that's zero pressure. He's going to make that goal almost every single time. So, um, for me, it showed, um, a little bit of a buildup uh, in possession, although I think DC was scrambling as well. Um, but the second goal that gets scored is, is more of that possession. Get Kevin, does it make sense that this team is still not a, a possession based, creative attacking team? Well, what I was going to say, first of all, looking at that video, um, you didn't see much of the crowd, but it was a pretty good crowd out there for a, a preseason game. Um, what I liked about the game, though, is it, as you mentioned earlier, the Galaxy fell behind twice. They came back both times. And when they came back and scored, it's it, it was kind of like when Zlatan was here. You didn't get this sense the Galaxy were chasing the game or were panicking. It was just sort of like, okay, they got one, we're going to get one. And they did, and they basically came back fairly quickly. They weren't panicked, they weren't rushed, they stayed to their game plan, and they scored the goal. And I don't know whether that's sort of 
you know, that grit that we're, we're not going to be down. They're going to come back. Is it confidence in their game plan? Is it just confidence period that, okay, it's just a goal. We're going to get one back, but they came back both times. And, and, and I, I know you're going to show a video of the second goal. That to me was maybe more indicative of the things that we'd like to see because it was, it, it was Jovalik and Chicharito teaming up. And I, I, I thought even last year that, that that was a pairing that they needed to have on the field together. I just, really feel like those two players are going to complement each other. And, uh, you know, they combined on the goal that, that wound up tying the game. Yeah, it, it was it was a good combination as well. Um, I think overall the, the Galaxy, you know, played it quickly. But that's also, you know, when you look at it, that's also Cabral in there playing as well. And, and Kevin Cabral has been absolutely one of the standout players of this preseason. When we talk about what we've learned from the preseason... Um, it's that Kevin Cabral is is no longer a wet noodle, um, uh, 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 to use Greg Vanny's words um, about his physique. Uh, Cabral has been engaged. He has been decisive. He has been confident. Um, all the things that really he was not last year um, very much. And so uh, when we look at you know these fast breaks and Cabral leading stuff out, and even if he almost screwed up that pass, it still made its way through. Jovalich with a, a little bit of a tick on, just as Bill Hamid. By the way, I will tell you right now, if the Galaxy don't score that goal, that is a penalty kick because Hamid absolutely clears out Jovalich after Jovalich got the ball. So there's all these things that sort of happen uh, to sort of conspire to get that tying goal, but it was fast. It was quick. They they had an idea of what they wanted um, and they made it happen. And I think if you're looking for this LA Galaxy team this year to be anything um, and to be better than what they were last year in a spot, it is this transitions. We've seen it all preseason. The transitions are quicker. They have more of an idea of where they're going and they're getting contributions from everyone. That's a huge change, I think, from last year. If we look at the goals, Kevin, uh, we can look at the preseason goal leaders. Chicharito had four goals. He wins the uh, the golden sandal. I'm calling it the golden sandal. If you want to call it the golden chancla, that's okay as well. Um, the golden sandal is out there. Chicharito wins it. He had four goals in the preseason. He could have had five. I'm pretty sure the one he scored at, at Golcello was onside whenever he scored it. Um, but they, you know, they ruled it off. It is what it is. Uh, Chicharito with four goals. You had Kevin Cabral with three goals. You had Farai Mutatu, which again is going to be a real question mark coming up on the 26th is the roster compliance deadline. We'll see if the LA Galaxy make a move before that. And they don't have to make the decision right then, but we'll see if they make a move before that to either add Mutatu to the roster or sign him down to Galaxy 2. We'll see about that. Uh, he had three goals. Jovalich had two goals. Grand Sur had two goals. Vasquez had one. Revelison, Dunbar, Alvarez, all with one. So you're getting a lot of contributions from this LA Galaxy team that did score in seven games, Kevin, 19 goals. Well, and you go back to, again, Jovalik on that goal. Um, you know, he he went in probably knowing that he had a chance to tie Chicharito for the, the esteemed golden sandal. And then watch the, the play at the end. I think a lot of players would have taken Hamid on here and, and maybe tried to score, you know, round, go around him and score. But Jovalik gives it up to Chicharito and uh, kind of an, uh, a, a selfless play knowing that Chicharito was in better position, he would get the goal. But there's a lot of players that would have just tried to score that themselves, especially yeah. knowing that the, the golden sandal was on the line. The golden sandal was on the line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyway, so we look at the goals and the goals scored. Uh, the final preseason record, as you had mentioned already, 4-1-2 and two for the LA Galaxy. 19 goals scored, 12 goals against. Uh, eight of those goals that the Galaxy gave up were in two games. Uh, the first one, and then uh, the first game, which they won 5-4 to four over Toronto, uh, and then the 2-4 to four loss to Vancouver Whitecaps, where Vancouver played their first team, and the LA Galaxy played their second team. So when you look at that, we can't really sit there and say, oh, well, the defense has been horrible this preseason, except for the fact that we all watched them play against DC United, and we saw them continually uh, fail to to meet the 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 standard of which I think Greg Vanny has sort of held up as as what they need to do. Vanny has pinned, by the way, this entire season on the defense, Kevin. He has said, if the defense plays well, we're going to be a good team. And if they don't, conversely, I will take the converse from what Greg has said. And if the ga and the Galaxy don't play defense well, and that's not just the back line, that's everybody. But if the Galaxy don't play defense well, then they're not going to be a good team. It's going to hinge on that. Yikes. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's a problem because I think if you saw in this game, and certainly with the center back pairings. Remember, Williams is hurt. Williams is your lock-in starter, right? Everybody agrees he should be starting. When he's healthy, he's there because he hasn't proven that he shouldn't be. Uh, he's very solid. He's probably the most solid defender on the team. Uh, has big personality, uh, you know, big physicality factor to his play as well. He's a big body on there. Everything is better whenever Derek Williams is on the field for that LA Galaxy defense. Right now you have Nick Depew uh, and you have Sega Koulibaly. Nick Depew has been the most consistent defender the LA Galaxy have had this preseason. Bar none, not even close. 
Um, and Sega Coolbally has sort of continued what we have seen with him over the years, um, over the last year and, and into the start of this preseason, which is he's inconsistent and you know he's going to make mistakes. Um, the the second goal that I think DC scored off the set piece was somebody ghosting and running right off of Sega's back shoulder again. And it's something that's, that is the key in, in a lot of the things that happen um, with the LA Galaxy is how does Sega Koulibaly play and um, is anybody making runs off his back shoulder? Because now the scouting report should be screaming run off of Sega Koulibaly's back shoulder because he's never going to find you and he doesn't anticipate well. Um, so that's that's a problem. And that's where we get to Eric Zavaleta because, Kevin, I think you and I both agree that the LA Galaxy need another center back, right? I'd like a Dan Steris or a Dave Romney. You you could say that. How about I want I want a player and I think the LA Galaxy absolutely need another center back. All right, I will I will state it, you know, categorically. They need another center back. Okay? But what they need is they need a starter at center back. Okay? Because they're missing a second starter. Right now it's Williams and who else? It's going to be Nick DePew whenever Williams comes back, but right now well, but we've seen Williams' injury problems. I mean, he's kind of the defensive version of of Douglas Costa. He is. Absolutely. Um and so there's a lot of injuries that have stacked up for him. So you can't count. So you need another person who's going to be a starter in there, right? Nick DePew is one. So you need the third. So who's going to be the third? I'm telling you right now, Eric Zavaleta, which was out there training, and, and we'll talk about what Greg Vanny said about Eric Zavaleta here in a second. But Eric Zavaleta is not a starter. He's not a starter for the LA Galaxy. Uh, he's a spot starter in places and he's depth. But the LA Galaxy, to me, don't need depth at center back. They have center back depth. Uh, they have Jalen Neal, right? They have Sega Koulibaly. They have Nick DePew. They have Derek Williams. They have Kelvin Leardam, who can play at center back as well. So they have guys that you can put in there. So to me, get a starter in there. That is going hard to, to do, though. That's hard to do. Good apparently, starting center back. Apparently, the LA Galaxy haven't found one in how many years? Hey, I know. Giancarlo Gonzalez. I know. I don't think people. That's. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, Jorgen Shelvik. What is Jorgen Shelvik doing right now? Yeah, um, Yellow Van Dam. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess Jorgen could could play in the middle. Yeah, or, or Yellow Van Dam. Yeah. Um, How about if we get in the time machine, time machine, and go back to 2014 and get Omar? <laughs> Again, Omar. Well, I mean, Omar. You could have had Omar this year if you wanted him. Uh, Bruce. Bruce wanted them. He got him. Um, over at, over in thing. But what I'm saying here is that. Um, I have no problems with getting Eric Zavaleta, and we'll talk about uh, again. We're gonna, we'll switch in, in, into what Greg Vanny said and sort of look at that. But for me, the biggest question marks for this LA Galaxy team in terms of depth, in terms of starters, in terms of play, is a center back or a defensive midfielder depth. Because okay, okay yeah. well, let me ask you this then. You, you know, I'm a big fan of Dan Steris, and he's gone, and and they got nothing for him. Basically, it was just get his salary off the books, and they're still paying was, some some of his salary. Right. Um, well, yeah, because he went above what he got last year. That that was the deal. But I think he was around 300000 last year, a little bit under that. Knowing what you know now about where they are, about Sega not really being the answer and, and about Williams and his injury problems, it, was it worth getting rid of Dan Steris or do you think they should have bitten the bullet kept, and paid the $300,000 and kept him here? I'm going to I'm going to tell you the exact same thing that I think I have said over Jossi Zardis and Dave Romney, too, which is that boat, that, that ship has sailed. The, the boat has sunk. You're done. You already made that decision. And I believe that the uh, relationship there wasn't strong enough. I don't think Greg Vanny trusted Dan Stairs. And quite honestly, I don't think Dan Stairs trusted Greg, uh, Greg Vanny. So have it, there you go. That's it. Dan did, seem, Dan did seem to be pretty happy to go. I mean, he's he he, he's looking for a place to play. He wasn't playing last year, right? I mean, that's it's the same thing with Dave Romney. Dave Romney wanted to go. He wanted to go to Nashville. Why? Because the Galaxy weren't playing him. They were like, okay, if you want to go, go ahead. Oh, he's part of what he's part of the league's you know best defense. Well, big surprise. Um, so you know, you look at these things and you say, listen, you you can't mend those fences once those are gone. So that's gone. So no, they shouldn't have kept them. He wanted to go and they wanted to get rid of him. That sounds good. Have a nice day. Go ahead for that separation. You know, um, because now you get to live with that, but you're living with it in a way that to me is, is untenable. You're, you're going to have a problem at center back, especially if there's another injury. Um, and I think that that's going to be a huge thing to watch because of the center of the field, I think was improved slightly with Revelison and Delgado sort of playing a double pivot. I think they'll be okay. They've showed that in preseason so far that they've been, that they've been okay. I'm not saying that there's a, a stopper in there, which I, again, we talked about defensive mid is another place that I would look at possibly getting a starter or a high quality depth piece. 
Um, but if you're going to bring Eric Zavaleta in, uh, and let's give you a little info on, on Eric Zavaleta. Um, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff here. Basically, uh, six foot one, 29 years old, uh, born in El Salvador. Uh, he's they a central pupusas in El Salvador. I, that's what I heard. So I'll, if yeah. he's maybe if he's bringing the pupusas, maybe Ooh, I'll change my mind. That's the yeah, that's yeah, the tie. That's the Very tie good. in. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so so that's it. But he's also, and we've said this before, and um, you know, don't get too excited about it. But he's also Greg Vanny's nephew. Um, and it was funny the day that they announced Greg Vanny as the LA Galaxy head coach. I had Toronto fans like replying back to me. Uh, about different things. They're like, don't be surprised when he brings his nephew with him. Like the whole deal. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll see how that goes. But that was all of last year and it was sort of out there. Let's take you back, Kevin. Can I take you back to a to a yesteryear time? Would you like to would you like to be transported? You talked about a now time we machine. We need to do like clouds and stuff and then uh, uh, there has to be a clock running backwards. I, I want to take you back to back far, back real far, back to February 3rd of this year. So it's earlier this month. I hope everybody enjoyed that t- that little time. We should do the Wayne's World. Do 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 do. All right. No, we need I'm, some special effects to we'll, do that. We'll, we'll, we'll do it in post. Don't worry about it. Um, so uh, so this was Greg Vanny speaking to uh, Scott French, actually asked him the question in a post game. Uh, but he spoke to Vanny and he said, uh, he said, hey, what about Eric Zavaleta? We heard that perhaps he would he might be coming to the LA Galaxy. This is February 3rd. The LA Galaxy head coach speaking. I have spoken with him. I have spoken with his agent. It's not a move that we are that we are sizing up or making. Um, you know, something that we talked about is our center back depth and whether we need something there, whether he ends up being the right person or not. We haven't made any real progress or discussion on that, but um, certainly he's out there and he's a free agent. But there's nothing in the works or in the making. Either. There you go. There's nothing in the works or in the making, Kevin. That's not happening. Um, it's not something that we're going to, it's not something that we need right now. And then all of a sudden with Williams not coming back and I should point out in this game, Sega Koulibaly got injured. We don't know the, um, the prognosis for him right now or the diagnosis for him right now, just because uh, it was so soon after the game, Greg said that he had hurt his arm, his, his shoulder, his, his elbow, of some sort whenever he got body slammed to the board. By the way, if there's VAR, somebody gets a red card in that play. I don't remember who it was on DC United who literally picked up uh, Sega and slammed him into the ground at the end line. Uh, totally. Wow, that must have been a strong guy. It was. It was. A, it was. It was like jarring. You're like, oh my goodness, that's Aaron that's crazy. Donald or somebody. It was. It, it was a big guy, and so he slammed uh, Koulibaly into the ground, and Koulibaly got hurt. So now you have Koulibaly possibly not playing. So now who are your starters if you go Sunday without Williams, without Koulibaly? Well, I know one guy who's starting. It's Nick Depew, right? And it's like who else? Um, so you know, we'll see if we'll see if, however. Um, We'll see if if Zavaleta actually gets added to this roster and has well, made it. But well, this... if you but if you look back at at the comments, Greg's comments, and I don't speak fluent Danny yet. Like I, I did speak fluent Arena at the end, right? Where I could actually look at what he said, and 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 the words didn't mean anything. It was you you could interpret what he said. So you look at this where he says, uh, where he he says we're talking to his agent. It's not a move that we're sizing up or making. Um, I, so you could read into that. Who ble- who really blinked first? Was the agent asking for too much money and the Galaxy were just like, look, you know, we'd like to take a look at this guy, but not at that money. We just we just don't think he's worth that. Was that part of it? Or was it the, uh, uh, or was it the Galaxy saying, you know what, we don't need him right now. We don't need anybody. And and even if you guys come for free, we don't need you. So you kind of wonder who blinked first. Was it the agent that said, holy crap, we're a week away from opening day and this guy still doesn't have a job. We're going to drop our price. And now it is a move that he's sizing up. Or was it the Galaxy that said, my gosh, the guys we have here totally suck. This guy may not be the answer, but he's better than having nobody out there. We better talk to his agent, and now maybe the price has gone up. So I, I don't know if any of that's happened, but that's just kind of how I parse that and say somebody might, might have blinked, and I don't know if it was the Galaxy or Zavaleta's agent. I mean, listen, I can read into that, certainly, and find a way for, for Vanny to make that signing, and, and and he'd say I didn't contradict myself. I can see that. I'm not, I'm not even saying that he did. I'm just saying in February 3rd, he was fairly confident that they weren't going to need uh, Eric Zavaleta's service. Now, as it stands, where you're at, Kevin, where the LA Galaxy are at, knowing that you're probably going to have to start Nick Depew, if Sega is actually injured, which I think there's still a 50, that's not even true, I think there's a 70% chance he's probably fine enough to play. Um, but if he can't, now you have Nick DePew and Jalen Neal, Nick DePew and Kel- nope, Kelvin nope. Leardam. Three five two. It'll be it'll be Leardam moving into the center back, and then Araujo starting on the right hand side. That's that's the actual answer. 
only because Greg told us that that was going to happen, but we haven't seen that. So now they're going to get Eric Zavaleta and they're going to look like they need him, right? Because they have no more bodies, Kevin. That's sort of, it was like, oh, look, we ran out of guys. We have no more bodies. Um, and so it, it just, to me, it almost feels like they have created the need and they're going to position the need with Zavaleta coming in. Uh, he's not, another, o- he's not overly expensive, Kevin. Another possibility. Yes. Zavaleta gets the start because of the injuries goes on to play 34 games, 90 minutes every week and wins MLS defender of the year. And boy, do you look silly? Oh man. What, I, you know what? I would love it. Let's, let's get ready to mark this and pull it back and play it back for everybody. Whenever I, I look like I was, uh, it was funny. Uh, by the way, uh, Anthony, uh, gave us a $10 super chat and said <laughs> for Chicha Dios sake, buy an Eero, Kevin, they're talking about your camera and it's freezing and they're blaming the yeah, internet. It's freezing. Yeah, no, it's freezing. It, it is the internet. I'm telling you this. How can it be thing. the internet? Like how, how is that possible in, in today's day and age that you can't get an upload speed above like seven? That, how do you know I'm not calling from a bunker in Ukraine right you, now? You could, I mean, right. I, I, might be, I might be covering the war. I would, I'll tell you right now, the Ukraine has better internet than you have where you're at <laughs> yeah, right Yeah, they now. do. They do. Guaranteed. They Guaranteed. Do. Um, so yeah. So anyway, so that's, that's with uh, Zavaleta. So we look at, even if you look at Zavaleta's, you know, record last year, he played you know, he started 12 games. He played 14 games. They had a thousand minutes over the all. If you go back and look at 2017, though, when when Toronto FC was at its peak, right? 29 games played, 27 games started, 20, almost 2,400 minutes in there. All right. So that was either one the treble. Yeah. The, yeah. Although you want to count it as a duo, but it was a treble. It, it, went, it went, yeah, I know, because they're going to count the Canadian championship, which should never be counted because I, you might be able to win the Canadian championship. Um, Herb, by the way, gave us an $8.45 super chat. He says, hey, Josh, hey, Mr. Baxter, uh, late to the show, still waiting on the jersey I ordered on the release date. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I have seen the shipping, um, and I, I think shipping should be arriving Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week for you. So um, I think you're still okay. Well, a couple of things. First of all, Mr. Baxter is my dad. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm Panda, Kevin, whatever, you, fool, stupid, whatever you want to call me. Also, eight forty five. Uh, yeah. That's a strange amount. Was that like translate? Is that uh, it's what, it's what time, euros or whatever? It's what time it is right now. It's eight forty five. Oh. So See? you pay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't think I was. I'm gonna in a catch different that. time zone. When I got eight forty two over here. Yeah. Well, you know, he was just in he the Ukraine. He doesn't I mean, know how long it takes to process and, and yeah, pop, okay. pop through. So yeah, that's uh that's where we're at. So, um, but Herb, thank you, sir. Uh, my sugar daddy, Herb, is is still. Hey, yeah, chat Herb, 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 Herb it, is our single funder for most yeah, of the stuff and, that we and, have. Yeah, yeah. And let's let's start the QAnon stuff again about maybe it's herbal life. Maybe it's herbal life. Maybe yeah. it could be. You never know. Um, so anyway, so that's where we're, uh, that's where we're at. That's what we're looking at. All right. So, um, you know, with Zavaleta, I, I don't know if they pull the trigger on this. It certainly seems like they're ready to pull the trigger on it, but it's almost like Kevin, and I will say this and then we can change We can, we can sort of, uh, turn the page on it. It almost feels like they lit the, the house on fire and now they're like, well, see, we told you we needed the fire department. It's like, yeah, well, you caused the problem. So well, of course you need to have somebody come fix it now. It's like, I'm think I'm thinking we might need the fire department. Well, maybe you don't. And it's like, oh, well now you do because you haven't gone out and gotten somebody else. M- maybe they're cap tied. We know that they have a full TAM spot available. We know that there's probably a high TAM spot available. You telling me you can't get a center back, a starting center back. You telling me you can't get Walker Zimmerman for high TAM money. I'm just kidding. You can't get Walker. Zimmerman. Well, for high I mean, money. LAFC just signed a Canadian, uh, national team player, as a center back. I mean, I mean, I, it, it, I don't know if that's the guy you wanted, but, but he might be an upgrade from Zavaleta. So you're suggesting that Williams is faking the injury and Koulibaly took a dive so that Greg Van I could run to the microphone and say, Eric Zavaleta is coming to save us. I think, I think that's exactly what's going wow. on. I, I think, I think, I think I nailed it. I think if I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on, I think that's what happened. So anyway, so that's where we're at. Um, you know, the, you can, you can scream about nepotism all you want. And I think it's perfectly valid. I have no problems with that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's sort of where we're sitting. Uh, LA galaxy get through the game two two. Um, like I said, not a great performance to sort of fit, but maybe, maybe it shakes them a little bit before this, uh, this, this start of the season, Kevin, maybe it was like, Oh, well, we thought we were doing really good and you know what? We're not doing good. And that's not, that's not a good thing for us. Right. But I mean, look at the positives. I, I, I really do think it's a positive. They came back twice from one goal deficits. I think that that shows a little bit of fight and spunk. It's something they did last year and didn't do the year before. Um, it's a step in the right direction. I mean, yes, you can look at the poor play and say they were lucky to get out with the draw. They should have had to rally for those two goals. But the fact is they fell behind twice and they rallied and came back twice. 
Yeah, they did. Um, and, and set pieces it seems to me to be something it, like you said, both goals on set pieces, something that can be correct. Guess what Greg said? He said that because they had a split squad this week, because they had the Wednesday game against Vancouver and they had half the team go play Vancouver and they had the half team that they did not get to practice defending or attacking set pieces. And he thought that they were poor on both and that he would remedy that this week. So um, see, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. This is also the guy who said he would fix the defense uh, last year and he had like seven days to do it or whatever the, the number Maybe was. Maybe he can fix my internet. I doubt it. I doubt it. We've, you know, I, outside of, of calling people, I actually don't think it's your internet because your your modulation on your voice is perfectly fine. It is really your camera. And I'm pretty sure because it's your built in laptop camera and the LA Times, I'll call them out. You don't have to say anything. Don't just nod your head whenever I'm right. Uh, the LA Times is too cheap to get you a webcam that might actually facilitate, you know, proper. Uh, the look of a podcast that you are on that promotes their product on a regular basis to thousands and thousands of galaxy fans. Um, yeah. I mean, I, that would, that would be, I would think that would be one of the things I would try, but Hey, you know, what do I know? I just host a podcast for 14 seasons. Um, let me, uh, let me get to Greg Vanny. Oh, right yeah, I know. I'm, I'm I know. you know, I was sick and like, I'm finally feeling better. And I got, I'm now I'm like, now I'm like going after people. That's how I'm feeling good. So, I'm, you know, I worked out today too. So, yeah, you just called me out of the blue, and then all of a sudden you said you don't really want to talk to me, and then you hung up. That was really weird. I, I didn't want to talk to you. That was correct. So that's all you needed. Um, let's see. I wanted to get to uh, Greg Vanny talking about Costa because he says something here that I don't think he's he's sort of he, – he pretends like he has said this before, Kevin, but he hasn't said this before. Um, and I, I think it's important to sort of hear about Costa because we were asking about his availability and he said he would be available for Sunday if he got his visa. Um, and they sort of said, well, what does, you know, Chicharito and Costa really bring to that? And so, uh, here's Greg Vanny's answer. Yeah. Uh, again, I think adding another high quality, sophisticated player like Costa, who, uh, I do believe he's going to score goals in this league. He certainly can, can set up goals. Uh, his vision is is outstanding his technical ability and his ability to hit different passes and to hit shots that he can get off instantaneously. I don't know if I've seen many people release a shot as quickly as he does. Uh, so all of those things, again, Kevin's growth, which we've talked about, uh, you know, Victor's experience and his final passing, and he's been excellent through preseason, which, you know, unfortunately we missed him today. Um, all these things take pressure off of, you know, one guy having to be the guy. I think it's going to be, a, you know, a, a team effort as it comes to creating and finishing attacks. So so there you go. Just a little more on, on I, Costa. I, I appreciate the fact that he noticed my growth. I mean, I, you know, he <laughs> mentioned it there. I, I'm really, really, that that's cool. Thanks, Greg. It's your ear hair growth. That's what he was mentioning. You're, you've really grown um yeah so this anyway way, that way yeah exactly um yeah it was more like this it was more wide yeah. that's how i've yeah. grown um that's for sure and the pupusas aren't going to help and i'm so looking forward to that i will gladly work out an extra day just to make sure um we, you know we, greg yeah. is really a, greg's love affair with with he keeps calling him costa i don't even know if it's costa or costa but whatever with douglas i mean i i've never rarely ever heard a coach just gush so much on one player and it, it, is he i'll ask you is he all that in a bag of chips i mean i know he's a good player but is he all that in a bag of chips is greg trying to convince himself was 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 this kind of forced on greg and he has to make the best of it just i haven't ever heard him say anything other than you know costa's the second coming yeah I, here's the thing and i think it's hard for a, it's hard for me to put it in perspective i did not watch costa play a lot whenever he was one of the best wingers in the world and that's not an understatement. He was at one time one of the best wingers in the world. And that's the hard part to sort of put this in is that Greg Vanny clearly has seen him play and has already watched him in training and feels confident enough that there's enough of that best winger in the world that he's going to be able to help open up and exploit things in, in Major League Soccer for the Galaxy. He has to have seen something already that would make him say that because no coach is going to go on on the board right now. If you've watched him in training, you're like, Oh man, this guy doesn't have it anymore, right? He has to feel feel confident to gush like that, as you said. Go all in. He's got all his chips in on uh, on Costa, right? He's like he's one of the best wingers in the world. He can still provide and produce, and he talks about his shot in terms of how quickly he gets his shot off um, as well. So, what when you look at his numbers, they don't blow you away like Salatan's numbers do. Um, when you look at his minutes and his games played, he doesn't look. It, it, it's not off the charts. When you look at the fact he's won 
everywhere he's gone. And yes, he's been surrounded with other people, but he has been on a winning team everywhere he's gone. You look at that and you say, great. Okay. Well, he made one Brazilian world cup team and was not a starter. That kind of raises a few questions. It is Brazil. Then you look at the, you know, Byron Munich loaned him out, I think twice, uh, Juventus loaned him out. He was on a team. Yes, he was there when they were in the first division, but he was taken from a second division team in Brazil. Juve didn't want him. Byron had a chance to keep him, didn't want him. You look at that and you say, well, why does he keep moving around? Why didn't they want him? And on one hand, you say, what's wrong with him? But on the other hand, I kind of see where Vanny's coming from. Here's a guy who played at Byron, who played in Serie A, who played in Donetsk, uh, played for the Brazilian Olympic team. Maybe at 31, he's not at that level, but you know what? Neither is MLS. Yeah. So maybe he comes in and it's not playing in the Bundesliga. He's not playing in Serie A. Maybe he just lights it up over here. Uh, uh, my my smarter half, uh, Sophie, is in the chat room, uh, and she says uh, he might not be the same as he was in Europe, but he's already the best player on this team. I don't know that I will disagree. Um, and I know Chicharito is going to be good. And by the way, uh, uh, one of our, our chat members says uh, Chicharito had four goals and one assist in preseason. He is scoring 25 to 30 goals this season if he doesn't get you know injured. Well, yeah, I mean, but that would have been if the same case. Get, yeah. yeah, if he, that would have been the same case last year. But I get it. Even if Chicharito is scoring that, I have a feeling that Douglas Costa has a chance to be one of the best players in Major League Soccer. And, well, and here, here's why Sophie may be right. It's because Zavaleta technically is not signed yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's so gonna have to bring a whole bunch of pupusas in order yeah. to be the most valuable player on this team see if she feels the same way in a couple oh, of days yeah that's true uh a very very well played sir um we talked about the uh the injuries victor vasquez was out uh with a right calf strain he's questionable for sunday that's a huge deal he is the creative heart of this la galaxy team if he doesn't play um then that's a problem maybe maybe Douglas Costa comes in and he fills that void of creativity. Uh, I thought Efrain Alvarez did okay in terms of trying to be creative. Uh, Vanny obviously called out his wide players for playing too wide and therefore sucking uh, sucking the the control out of the midfield. And I think that's a problem when Vasquez isn't there holding space and creating from his area. Um, so we'll see. But Efrain Alvarez is going to be thrown into a creative spot again uh, come Sunday if Vasquez can't play again. He's questionable. We talked about Koulibaly. Uh, we don't know what the severity of his injury is might find that out on Wednesday. And then Williams, of course we talked about training with G2 Costa waiting for his visa. Um, we should know more about that all on Wednesday, whenever there's that in person, uh, media availability. So most, hold your breath. Im- most improved for you. Most, Cabral? most That's improved Cabral? player. Um, it's going to be Cabral. Uh, I really, I think grand Sir has, has looks a lot more comfortable. Uh, but I still don't see that finishing touch for Grant here, and Cabral has that right now. Uh, certainly most, has the confidence. Most deproved. Most deproved is who's going to be the person? Well, I don't know. See, I would say Koulibaly, but you'd have to be yeah, good in order to be deproved. Um, well, I, yeah, I mean, I get that, but I, I think that perhaps the expectations were much higher for him. I think when he came in, he played well right at the beginning. Um, whether that was his level and he has sunk below that for whatever reason, or whether. Um, he was playing above, you know, uh, you know, it, he was playing, punching above his weight a little bit. I don't right. know, but um, certainly I, I had come to expect a lot more after the first four or five games, the way he played when he first got here. And yeah. so, yeah, I think I've been a little disappointed with him this spring as well, or yeah. this winter, whatever it is. I can see that. Um, let's get to our predictions. Let's talk a little predictions. Let's be wrong uh, on, on, on record. Cause that's always fun. Um, where will the LA galaxy finish in the Western conference this year, Kevin? I like them around fifth or sixth. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think it's going to be fairly comfortable, meaning two or three games left. They're going to look real solid. Uh, You know, Seattle is good. A lot of people seem to be picking Nashville down in the middle of the pack. I think it's Seattle and Nashville. I think Kansas City has gotten worse. Um, I don't think Real Salt Lake is as good. as I think Portland is going to be a tra- uh, you know a dumpster fire this year. A lot of things have gone on there. Col- I, don't the think Col- I don't think Colorado's gotten any better. Have they, they've no, gotten Colorado's worse, right? Got, Colorado's gotten worse. They lost the, the heart of their midfield with uh, Acosta and, the, and and who's the player that uh, that uh, the uh, tennis to close took to uh, Holland. So they've lost a lot there. Um, I think it might be it might wind up being a two team race, Seattle and Nashville. Vancouver is going to be better, I think, this year. But we'll like you said, yeah. Colorado is going to be, and I think LAFC um, is going to be a much better team too. I think Seattle, I think it was going to be LAFC and the Galaxy sort of 
uh, you know, in fourth, fifth, sixth place coming down the stretch fighting for that last uh, for one of the last playoff berths. Yeah. Um, hey, I'll give you mine after we're done. We'll go through the whole list. Then I'll give you mine afterwards. Uh, where would the Galaxy then finish overall in the league? So you have 28 teams now. The Galaxy, a top 10 best team in, in Major League Soccer. Are they outside of that? Just outside of that. Maybe 12th, 13th. Okay. Um, middle of the pack. Pretty okay. much middle of the pack. All right. I can see it. Uh, who will score the, score the most goals for the LA Galaxy? Chicharito. And I agree with the, the, with the, the guy that wrote in. 25 goals. I, th- it's, I think it's within reach, but is he going to get hurt? Right. Um, if he can play, if he can start 30, 28, 30 games and, and, and play a lot, yeah, I think that's well within reach. Why? Because Cabral is going to have a much better season, it seems. Mm-hmm. Grant Sear sort of seems to have found a touch. I think uh, Jovalik is going to be a big part of this team, and I think he's going to be a big part of a team in in dishing off to Chicharito not scoring. And, and then we know – or we think we know what Douglas Costa can do. So with those four players, if they're playing at top level, feeding Chicharito, who is still the focus of the offense, I think 25 goals is well within reach. Do you, if he stays healthy, is it more, is it closer to 30? No, no. I think 25 is kind of, okay. I, I just feel like that number just feels like I, I don't see him in, in Yosef Martinez, Carlos Vela is a lot on uh, range, but I think, you know, a solid. I mean, that's almost a, if he starts 28 games, it's almost a goal a game. That's pretty yeah. good. No, it, it would be it would be a lot. Um, He finished close to a goal and assists per game Um, when he played, scored 17 goals and had 21 games, I think, is what he ended up playing in um, and, <laughs> last and, year. And, tw- and 25 to 28. I, I think that's the ceiling on his starts. Why? Because the, the compressed schedule. Uh, and the travel, remember, travel's back again this year. It's not limited as it was in the past. Travel's back. Yes, it's chartered, but still travel. Um, they still have a long way to go. There's different time zones. I think Greg Vanny is going to look at both him and Costa and say, these guys are older players. They have soft muscle uh, tissue injuries at, with Chicharito. It's a calf. That's a really hard thing. You know, he may not ever heal from that uh, while he's playing. And it just may all be, always be one of those things that's lingering there. And so I don't think when they have those three games in a week thing, I don't think Chicharito starts all three of those games. So there are places where he's just certainly not going to start. I think 20, 25 to 28 starts for him is realistic and, and would be a lot actually. Your, your final, uh, your final prediction here, uh, who will lead the team in assists? Well, that see, I, it, it, I don't know how many minutes or how many games cost is going to play. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Cabral right now, but certainly it's going to be a two, a two man race. Okay. Uh, you, you mean Araujo? Do you mean Araujo instead of Cabral or did you mean? Cabral? No, I mean, I mean Cabral and, okay. and, and right. Costa. Cool. Well, then it'll definitely be a three third man race because my pick is Araujo for most assists. Well, uh, so. what about I think Pavone too. Pav- Pavone's not playing, yeah. so I don't have to worry about that. Oh, not um, yet. Not, yeah, don't don't start that, please. <laughs> um, all right, so here's mine. Um, I think the Galaxy, and I said it last time, are a top three team in the Western Conference this year. Really? Um, yeah. Really? So so I agree. Who else? I agree with you, Kevin. Um, I agree with you. Seattle is certainly, I think, top and head and shoulders above everybody else. I think Nashville is probably going to be in there. There's going to be a surprise team, though. Um, there always that, is. But what, why are people dumping on Nashville? Can you explain that? What, what I, I think just Nashville, think they're solid. I, I think that I have, think you have to expect them to be as good as they were last year. And I think yeah. that the only argument is that they're going to travel a lot because they're on that far eastern side of the Western Conference, right? So they have a lot of travel, uh, and they're not playing in what we what is known as the MLS as MLS's uh, second division, the Eastern Conference as well. So it's going to be tougher. They're going to have games against Sporting Kansas City, who. I think is going to always tread water. Peter Vermees is going to be there. So that's probably, you know, a top. Here's here's where I agree with you. You're right. The LA Galaxy are probably f- fourth, fifth, sixth. I'll give you sixth. I think that's even on the outside. But I, I talked about this uh, last week, um, which was um, that the LA Galaxy are being driven by a singular focus, which is to avenge what happened last year. Um, and they all talk about it and they talk about it as a driving force. And there is a shared collective um, understanding that they're going to, you know, uh, make up for what happened last year. So this team is definitely a playoff team. I watched MLSsoccer.com, by the way, they had some predictions there, and about half of them had the LA Galaxy out, out of the playoffs, not making no, the playoffs that's, again. No, that's not going to happen. I don't see it either. Um, Should we call them the, the Avengers? Yeah, you you could. Um, so that's why I think they're third. I think they're going to overperform this year in terms of their roster. You can never overperform if you're the LA Galaxy. You and I talked about that um, because you're expected to win an MLS Cup every year. But this roster, I think, is probably a fourth, fifth there. And I think they're going to be a third place team 
um, because of that. Uh, where would they finish overall? I'm actually going to tell you that they finish inside the top 10 in 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 the league, by the way. Um, Chicharito will score the most goals. Uh, closely behind um, will be nobody. He will be head and shoulders a clear of everybody else. Um, I think Cabral is going to get a bunch of goals this year. I'm looking for 15 for Cabral. Not goals, but goals plus assists. So give me seven and eight or, you know, 10 and five, something like that from Cabral. And I think that's great. Uh, and Julian Rajo is going to lead the team in assists, even though he's going to be away with Mexico. Sometimes Douglas Costa is going to be right behind him in that. Um, and then well, Rajo's not even a starter. This <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's such a, <laughs> a lot of us just off the bench, boy. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Oh, by the way, somebody said if Chicharito gets called in for El Tri, are, are, are the Galaxy still going to be a top three team? If he's gone, Kevin, Chicharito is not able to play games. Either injury, national team call, which I don't think is happening, but we'll see. It could. If if Mexico gets in a bad enough place, they may. And Chicharito's firing on all cylinders. No, I, I got a better answer for that. If Chicharito gets called in by the Mexican national team, the Galaxy definitely go to MLS Cup because that means it's 2015, 2014, <laughs> 2014, 2014, 2014. I like it. Yeah, so, if Chicharito's called up, it's 2014, and the, M- and the Galaxy go to MLS Cup. There you go. Okay, that's my so, prediction. So there it is. Um, one of the things that I wanted to touch on because we just have a couple minutes um, was you talked about charters though, and you we and have I, as long as we have as long as we want. No, 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 we don't. Oh, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to be here for much longer. Um, this is about it. Thanks. Besides, I'm running Thanks. out of stuff. Yeah, one, I don't want to talk to you, and two, I'm yeah. running out of stuff. Well, I to talk get that. About. Okay. Um, charters, you talked about charters. You and I had a discussion about charters where, where I believe you told me that right now, at least teams are planning for like the first third of the season or something yeah, like that I, for I, charters. I was told the first third of the season, MLS has pretty much cleared that. And that's what the, the admin, the administrative people have been told to plan on. So, so the first third of the season at least are going to be charged. Is there a, is there a way for MLS to back away from charters without looking like the cheapest league on the face of this earth? I mean, there's a way for them to back away, but no, not without looking cheap. And, and uh, it, it, you know, if that happens, you you bring up a really interesting point because if that happens, I would love to see what the players do. My sense is there'll be a, a some group of players that are going to want to raise a ruckus and and come to the media with it, and there'll be another group that's just going to say, "Don't make, don't make any, you know, don't make any noise, just let it go." Um, it's going to be really hard for the teams, I think, to go from the reason they went to charters. Let's, it, they never had charters; they had like one or two a year right. for long trips, and then because of COVID, for them to continue playing. Uh, MLS would have lost a ton of money without it. So the MLS bit the bullet. The difference between flying commercial, a, a charter flight is about $80,000. And so you can think about a commercial flight, $200, $300 a ticket, and you're taking 25 people. You can see the cost difference. The diff- What the charter does, it lets you take as much luggage as you want. It lets you take off whenever you want, return whenever you want. You fly, can plan fly to, to where, up, Yeah, fly to where you want to go, by the way. Fly too. to what airport? Sometimes it's a smaller in t- in-town airport as opposed to the big international airport outside the city, as in Houston. It allows you to leave right after the game so you don't lose. Sometimes with those commercial flights, you have to leave in the morning, fly all day. You lose two training days. That's a big deal. Um, the charter, just for a competitive reason, is so much better, and it makes you look like a professional league. You go to a guy like a Douglas Costa, or somebody told me the funniest thing they ever saw in MLS was a lot on waiting in line to get on a Southwest flight. They just thought that was <laughs> hilarious. Think about that for just a second. This is the guy that flies a private plane right. when he travels on his own and then flies charters in Europe, and he's waiting to get on a Southwest flight. Um, so you can see where that is a black eye for the league. And now that they've had charters and people have experienced it, it's going to be hard for them to go back. And I, I do hope the players raise raise a stink if that happens. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it on that. By the way, um, one of our, uh, our our listeners in the chat room says, um, any news on Spectrum or other broadcast partner for 2022? You know that. I, I do. And I mean, listen, we're, we're still, there was apparently some movement or at least somebody thought it was moving towards a conclusion. The Galaxy haven't told me. I, I ask like every week because I'm annoying. Um, and so I ask every week and they're still saying they're still figuring it out the whole deal. So that's not, there's nothing official, but there did seem to be a move towards spectrum again to do be for the bridge here. We've already talked about why that makes sense. Um, to be honest with you, I'll tell you right now, the only other option that I see, and it's not a good option is for the galaxy to produce it themselves a hundred percent, um, and give it away for free to somebody on some programming somewhere. It, it may be 
that may work. But with Spectrum, you already have everything set up. They already did it last year. Everybody knows what the drill is, and you could do it again for one more year um, because it's just one year. There's only one year on this. So uh, there's another thing that people don't realize, and I've said it before on this podcast. Nobody's in any hurry to do this, Kevin, because the first local broadcast game isn't until like April 6th or something like that. So, for, <coughs> you know, we're at the end of February, February, March, April. You still have a considerable amount of time before you have to make that decision. So and, and explain to everybody what um, a bridge year is. It's nothing to do with build back better. No, it's not. Um, and, Infrastructure week. Yeah. And, and the whole deal is basically the bridge year is that in 2023 next year, um, basically towards the end of this year, we should know. Um, but MLS is going to sell all of the local rights and the national TV rights in a package. Um, and that package has been rumored to possibly be as high as three hundred million dollars. All right, but huh. it's it's low. Yeah, we'll see. No. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that was. We'll see if that happened. Um, but we'll see if um if that ends up coming through. But how that works then is that somebody you're still gonna have to produce those games. So do all the teams produce their games, their own games, and they give it to this person like an Amazon that streams every single game, so you could get every single game stream live. By the way, I would still expect that there's like geolocation blocking on this and it's not just wide open like everybody wants it to be. So don't just just chill with that, um, with that whole stuff too. Um so that's why there is the contract with Spectrum is up this year, or it was up last year. Um, at the end of the season. So they're done. There's no more contract so with that's, Spectrum. that's the bridge to get from 2021 20, to 2023. Right. And no one wants to sign a contract because TV contracts are always done in multiple years. No one wants to sign a one-year contract knowing that, hey, we're going to put all this time and effort and production money into these broadcasts. We're going to hire people like Nikki K to do a great job on the sidelines. We're going to do all that knowing that we only got one season. Why even bother to sell the advertising? Uh, why even bother to do that? So the the bridge year is how do we get from 2021 to 2023 when MLS is going to be in charge of everything? Now, there may be, I don't know how this TV deal is going to shake out. Nobody does, but there may be a room for some local broadcast, maybe minor one, you know, maybe uh, shoulder programming, you know, like Galaxy Backstage. Um, it, it, this is going to affect some teams. The Galaxy had the richest TV contract in MLS history, 10 years, $55 million. Real Salt Lake has an, a tremendous deal that is, is statewide in Utah. Um, they're losing that. So this is going to hurt a lot of teams. It's going to take a little bit of restructuring. And, and when you say $300 million, I think teams like the Galaxy and Real Salt Lake are saying, you better get $300 million because we're giving up a lot. And somebody like, uh, I don't know, a sport, you know, maybe Sporting Kansas City or, or Vancouver, maybe they get no money. So right. this, this is a competitive balance thing a little bit in that some teams are going to lose money and other teams aren't going to feel the pinch at all. Well, I mean, the other side of that is that the Galaxy are never getting $5.5 million again for their for their contract. I mean, that was, that was one of the rich just contracts in MLS history and it was way over market value for for what anything was supposed to be and nobody watches it on spectrum so there's a whole bunch of things like it's not like the galaxy can sign another contract for 5.5 million dollars a year that's not happening um so I, I you know i think we did the 300 and we sort of you know just started dividing that up and started to see you know out of 28 teams and how much you know i imagine that you probably end up getting three to four million dollars a team um which would be I think a pretty good deal for everybody involved if that happens, but it also depends on production costs and everything else. If you have to produce your own stuff, well, that's like 20 or $40,000, like a game that you have to yeah, put out. And, and real Salt Lake did that and then sold the, 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 essentially they put the package together and then they sold it. Um, and then the, the TV stations got it and they got to sell advertising. It, it's one of the things you talked about is with this bridge year, what were the galaxy just give it away? I know there there used to be a rule in MLS that every team had to have a local TV broadcast. They, they had to games had to be on TV. Uh, Chivas USA at the end simply gave the rights away. They told the TV station to come in. You, you we're, we're not going to charge you anything. Come in, send a guy down. You know, send a camcorder, record the game, and and you can have it. Um, and you know maybe that is the sort of situation the galaxy winds up with, where they they, they may not pay Spectrum to do it, but they just sort of say, hey, you know. We'll give you a parking pass and let you guys use a luxury suite if you put Nikki K on the sideline a few times a year. So the uh, the other thing is that, um, yeah, there's been some names bandied about um, ESPN, obviously with the ESPN Plus and all the stuff they have there. I think Paramount was in that um, Hulu at one time. And then Amazon was one of the people that supposedly was interested as well. So you're talking about stream services, right? So this is streaming service. So you're talking about so all soccer is going there. Yeah, and, and it seems to go that way. Now, we'll see whether or not that plays out in the long run, but if they're getting a whole bunch of money, maybe it does. Maybe it makes sense. There'll still be nationally televised games 
that type of things. Um, I would just love to be able to go to one place and watch every game that I want to. So that's sort of, if well, that's and, and, that's online, so I'm down the, with that. The streaming service would be great. Now, you know, I got my gramophone in the back here and I have to turn it to get the record player to, to start going. My son, who's 28, has never had a TV in his life. He watches everything streaming. It's just two different worlds. But right. when I talk to some TV companies about this, it's like, I want to watch the game on my TV um, with the rabbit ears and all that. And they said, you're not going to. Soccer is a, the demographic is 18 to 44, maybe 18 to 49. If we really stretch it, those people are streaming. We can give you josh in the streaming package every mls game right if you if if our you know bandwidth is limited on the regular tv you're not going to get that so streaming you know is the way of the future it's for soccer that's where the the viewers are and it gives you much more content i'm done i don't want to talk anymore can we can we go now is that okay I'm just getting warmed up. I, yeah, I know. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, LA Galaxy again, uh, just six days away from playing against New York City FC. Uh, it's a 2 p.m. kickoff time. ESPN, ESPN Deportes, nationally televised game. By the way, John in our chat room says um, that the first televised local game is April 23rd. So they have even more time to figure out what that is um, going on. But it should be fun. Sunday is going to be uh, be an early one. Uh, I think the weather was supposed to be nice and cool, like maybe 70 degrees uh, whenever I looked at it earlier. So, I mean, you're talking about prime time soccer weather. That's, that's early pupusa, afternoon. Pupusa weather right that there. That is buddy. pupusa weather. Every every weather is pupusa weather, my friend. There is no there's no bad time to have a pupusa. Um, this, this uh, I, I forgot to mention that this podcast is sponsored by pupusas everywhere. Um, so could, thank you for that. We appreciate it. Um, it's going to be, uh, I'm really interested to see how New York City plays in their CCL game. I'm really interested to see how their focus is come on Sunday. I think the Galaxy have a really good chance of breaking through and and getting a win early on against a team that is probably has its head focused other places whenever you're talking about CCL. So, um, you know, I think there's a good chance for the Galaxy. We're going to have a show on Thursday. We'll get you completely ready for that game. We'll talk about what happened on Wednesday for New York City. Um, and then get you ready for um, for the uh, LA Galaxy's game on Sunday, and we'll try to at least get some information and stuff that came out of Wednesday's uh, media availabilities. Yeah, I haven't completely ruled out skipping some work and, and going to that, but we'll we'll see if I can I can make that. So you have work. Why don't you get a job, buddy? Congratulations. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Um, so that's what we'll do. Um, all right, I think that about does it. Uh, if you are looking for Mister Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at kbaxter11. Head on over latimes.com where you can see all of Kevin's writing. Uh, he has a good article coming up. We'll see. What is it? It's going to be held, Kevin? Not, yeah, not it's going to be on Wednesday. It's, Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be on what Douglas Costa thinks about what's going on in the Ukraine. Remember, he played there six seasons. It's going to be it's going to be a good one. LATimes.com, that's where you're going to want to find it. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at jguessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find all of our shows all of our fun stuff is right there cornerofthegalaxy.com like this video subscribe tell your friends about it spread the corner of the galaxy gospel far and wide all right for mr kevin the panda baxter i'm josh pato guess when you've been listening you've been watching to corner of the galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com have a great one everybody you've been listening to the corner of the galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com you can follow the show on twitter and instagram at galaxy podcast And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.